Chapter 10, Section 4, Other Angle Relationships in Circles. Our first theorem in Section 4 states that if a tangent line and a chord intersect at a point on a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one-half the measure of its intercepted arc. A picture to go with this theorem would be on my circle, I have a chord and a tangent line that intersect on my circle. I'm going to go ahead and name my points. This theorem states that if I wanted to find the measure of angle ABC, I could take one half the measure of the arc intercepted. The arc intercepted by angle ABC is arc AB. That looks like angle ABC equals one half arc AB. If I wanted to find the measure of angle ABD, I could do the same thing by taking half of its inter intercepted arc. Now angle ABD intercepts the arc AEB. That would look like angle ABD equals one half arc AEB. Now remember that to name ma minor arcs, I use two points on the arc and to name a major arc, I use three points on the arc. So arc AB would be a minor arc, and arc AEB would be a major arc. An example of this theorem states that line M is tangent to the circle, and it asks us to find the measure of arc RST. If you notice, RT is a chord on my circle, and it is intersecting uh, ta the tangent line M on the circle. They tell us that angle R is 102 degrees and they ask us to find arc RST which is intercepted by that angle. To find the measure of the arc I'm going to take my angle measure which was 102 and multiply that by 2. When I do so I find that the measure of arc RST is 204 degrees. Another example states that line BC is tangent to the circle. It asks us to find the measure of angle CBD. It tells us that angle CBD is 3x and it tells us that the intercepted arc, arc BD, is 4x plus 50. I have two options to solve for x. The first option would be to go ahead and multiply my angle measure by 2 and set that equal to my arc length. That would be 2 times 3x equals 4x plus 50. Notice that I'm multiplying my angle measure by 2 but leaving my arc length alone. 2 times 3x is 6x, so I get 6x equals 4x plus 50. Go ahead and subtract 4x on both sides. You get 2x equals 50. And then divide by 2, and you get x equals 25. Now, my second option would be to leave my angle measure 3x alone, but take half of the arc length, 4x plus 50. That would be 3x equals 4x plus 50 divided by 2. Go ahead and divide both 4x and 50 by 2, and you wind up with 3x equals 2x plus 25. To isolate your variable, you want to subtract 2x from both sides, and when you do so, you wind up with x equals 25. Now, we have solved for x, but we have not answered the question. We got x equals 25, but now I want to solve for angle CBD, and when you do, you plug in 25 for x, so 3 times 25, and your final answer would be 75 degrees for angle CBD. The next theorem states that if two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. On this circle, I'm going to have arc I'm sorry, I'm going to have chord 
AC, and I'm going to have chord BD. Notice that these chords are intersecting on the interior of my circle. If I wanted to find the measure of angle 1, I would go ahead and take 1 half the sum of arc AB, AD, which is intercepted by angle 1, and arc BC, which is intercepted by its vertical angle. And that would look like the measure of angle 1 equals 1 half arc AD plus arc BC. Likewise, I could find the measure of angle 2 by taking 1 half the sum of arc AB, which is intercepted by angle 2, and arc CD, which is intercepted by its vertical angle. That would say that the measure of angle 2 equals 1 half arc AB plus arc CD. An example of this theorem states to find the value of x. If you notice, x is on the interior of my circle, and it is created by two chords that are intersecting. I know that the intercepted arc for, from angle x is 120 degrees. The arc intercepted by x's vertical angle measures 40 degrees. So to find x, I can take 1 half the sum of 120 and 40. 40 plus 120 is 160. I know that half of 160 will give me 80 degrees for x. Our next theorem says that if a tangent and secant, two tangents or two secants, intersect on the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is one half the difference of the two intercepted arcs. I have a picture for this theorem on the next slide. Here is a circle. Here I have a tangent line. And here I have a secant line. If you notice, they are intersecting at point X on the exterior of my circle. Now, my two intercepted arcs of angle X would be WY and WZ. This theorem states that angle X would be equal to one half arc WZ minus arc WY. And remember that this theorem works for not only one tangent and one secant, but it also works if you have two tangents intersecting on the exterior of a circle, or if you have two secants intersecting on the exterior of a circle. An example using this theorem asks us to find the value of x. Notice that x is the angle measure of two tangents intersecting on the exterior of a circle. It tells us that arc RS equals 80 degrees, but it does not tell us the measure of arc RTS, which is also an intercepted arc of angle X. To find RTS, I can use the fact that a circle measures 360 degrees. What I want to do is I want to take 360 and I want to subtract the 80 degrees that is always already taken by arc RS. So 360 minus 280, or I'm sorry, minus 80 will give me 280. This only works if you have two tangents intersecting on the exterior. This will not work if you have a tangent and a secant or two secants. Now, the theorem states that angle X should be one half the difference of 280 and 80. So plug that into a formula and you get x equals one half 280 minus 80. Well 280 minus 80 is 200. Half of 200 will give you x equals 100 degrees. The assignment for chapter 10 section 4 
is page 624, numbers 8 through 34 all.